Good morning, everybody. In the Bible, it says that stand up on the top of the mountain and spread the gospel as well as collect and gather people around. And uh, we need to do that right now. So in the Old Testament, when the temple of God was built, the actual place where the temple is being built is very quiet. There was no sound. They made each and every pieces of the building other place, from other places. And what they do in, uh, in the actual venue is to collect them together and connect them in the actual venue very quietly. What about our spiritual temple in our mind? This spiritual temple, which is composed of material gathered out of every nation and tongue and people of all grades, high and low, rich and poor, learned and ignorant. These are not dead substances to be fitted by hammer and chisel. They are living stones queried out from the world by the truth. And the great master builder, the Lord of the temple, is now hewing and polishing them and feeding them for their respective places in the spiritual temple. Yes, this spiritual temple, how to build it is to collect those souls from the world and fit them into the right place where they belong in the temple of God. So the pieces are from all over the world. Asians, Af Africans, Americans, Europeans. So God wants them to gather together in one place and make God's temple in their minds. The spiritual kingdom to extend throughout the whole world. The failure of the remnant of Israel made necessary to call to the Christian church. Its members, gathered from every nation, kindred, tongue, and people, were to constitute the new nation through which God would evangelize the world. Yes, God has prophesied for us. So the completion of this spiritual kingdom is from all over the world, different tongues, kindred, nation, people. They, would, they were to constitute the new nation, this spiritual kingdom of God. Then now, the second coming of Jesus Christ is near, very near. How do we have to act on this? How can we be the part of this? Now we have been doing this international seminars for several times. And they have, they come from all different places around the world. And the translation was actually a problem too. So uh, from Indonesian language to English, English to Korean or the backward. So one of the Indonesians who attended last seminar uh, gave us this testimony. I have learned from the Bible. And this is my burden in my heart. And how to bring the God news, good, good news, the gospel to other people. My And I have learned from the Bible. And this is my burden in my heart. And how to bring the God news, good, good news, the gospel to other people. 
my family, 저희 가족은 my cousin, 저희 가족 그리고 저희 사촌들, my friend, my colleagues, 친구들 같은 일하는 동료들, everyone that I know, 제가 아는 그 모든 사람들에게, even I don't know, 아니면 내, 내가 알지 못하는 그런 사람들에게조차도, but when I found Jesus Christ in here, 제가 여기에서 만난 그 예수 그리스도, very easy and simple, 너무나 그 배운 게 너무나 간단했어요. You just call upon Jesus. 그저 예수님을 부르라. And I feel I have this blessing from God. 제가 이 축복을 하나님께 받은 것 같습니다. And I know the way how to go right now. 이제는 어떻게 내가 살아야 되는지 알것 같습니다. Thank you very much indeed from my deep heart. 제 마음 깊숙한 곳에서부터 진심으로 감사하다는 말씀 드리고 싶습니다. 겁군 감. Thank you. 네. So uh, he gave the testimony, and in his testimony, he said, "Easy and simple. Easy and simple way that we know is what calling upon the name of Jesus. This is very easy and simple, but people have made it very complicated. So even calling out the name of Jesus is being really easy." But they made it really dif difficult. So Jesus actually gave a different parables about a master holding a banquet. And many people, when the master asked people to come to his own party and banquet, and people refused to attend that banquet. For many other reasons, many earthly reasons. Luke chapter 14, verse 16. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen and I am going to test them. I ask you to have me excused. Luke chapter 14, verse 23. Then the master said to the servant, Go out into the highways and hatches and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. So, two Israelites throughout the entire history of Old Testament, God sent many disciples, many prophets unto the people of Israel, but they refused them. They refused the words of word of God spoken through uh, His own prophets. Then God is now. Asking his servants to go out there, highways and hatches, to bring people there, any people around the world. God is now inviting every people around the world. Now, what about nowadays? What about this modern modern society? The gospel invitation is to be given to all the world, to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. Last message of warning and mercy is to lighten the whole earth with its glory. It is to reach all classes of men, rich and poor, high and low. Maybe until now, the gospel, the true gospel has given to you the people who already met Jesus and know Jesus and gospel, but they haven't practiced that gospel into their lives. And now, God is calling other people out there on the streets and hatches and highways who are sick, who are ill. So you heard just a while ago from our foreign friends from Thailand just a while ago, right? And he said what? What did he say? even to non-believers, my family, my relatives, my friends, but even to the people who don't know Jesus yet. So this Thai man said that. And also those foreign friends who would come this time said in, in the Sabbath school time that it's too easy and simple. This message is easy and simple. But these three angels' messages, 
the first angel's message and second angel's message is combined together. And it becomes the third angel's message. It's very simple. Revelation chapter 14, verse 60 says, Then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people. The, the core message of the first angel's first angel and second angel is to come back to worship the creator and come back to him and the second angel's message the gist is this come out of the Babylon because the message the true message is so much complicated and mixed with this, this worldly messages too that's why please come out of this world come out of this Babylon and uh, turn to the true gospel. And we have to spread this righteousness by faith. And how do we send this message to other people? The easiest way for us is to mix the gospel mix the true gospel with this health health lessons so as we saw from the news and uh, heard from the news the war between ukraine and russia is being uh, on these its way and it has they they actually have uh, the restriction area for uh, the planes and what about spiritual angels the angel was also seen flying through the midst of heaven. The area of flight indicates the worldwide nature of the angel's work and message. The work grows and develops until it is brought to the sight and hearing of all mankind. Now, God's hands is doing this job right now. Throughout people around the world. And now, think about the time of Noah. They had a time limitation, certain time limitation that water will pour down from the heaven. And Noah was there to preach the gospel for over 120 years. And each time in each era, each period of this entire time in, of the earth has their own dedicated message for their people. What about nowadays? What about this contemporary time? the inhabitants of the antediluvian world turned from Jehovah, refusing to do his holy will. They followed their own unholy imagination and perverted ideas. So the time of Noah, the people in that era had a different message. And their lives was all dirty and far from believing Jesus. So Satan is every time and every period, Satan manipulates people to follow him. He's trying his best to lure people with whatever people are pleased of. Pleasure to the eyes, pleasure to the mouth and taste and try to be, desire to be higher than other people, stepping upon other people and be, just try to make their names. Their betting, their horse racing, their gambling, their dissipation, their lustful practices, their untamable passions are fast filling the world with violence. So, when we see one country, one nation falls, and that moment, we can see people of that nation doing some bad stuff, sexually, socially, and spiritually. So the only one thing that can cure those kind of bad deeds is what? 
We can look back the past, past seminars about addictions. What is a true cure for addiction for young people, for middle-aged people, or old people? What? We've learned the cure for those addictions throughout many seminars, throughout the Bible, throughout people's experiences. But this whole world right now, they don't know this. They have no ways to be cured. So you know what? There are a lot of different ways for them to think about as a cure for their own diseases and addictions. But this word cannot give the exact and actually true uh, source of the, uh, this cure for their addictions and sicknesses. This word cannot give them. There is a famine in the land for the pure gospel, and the bread of life is to be given to hungry souls. So there are a lot of different temptations that Satan is using to lure people. And for them to be cured, they need gospel, the true gospel. But this word is this word's doctor and nurses, they're actually giving them shots and medications for them to be cured. But originally, it's not. Essentially, what is more important for them to be cured is for them to have this gospel, true gospel of Jesus Christ. But they deny the true gospel of gospel, but only try to cure them by giving them medications and shots and surgeries. The world is perishing for want of the gospel. There is a famine for the word of God. There are few who preach the word unmixed with human tradition. Though men have the Bible in their hands, they do not receive the blessing that God has placed in it for them. The Lord calls upon his servants to carry his message to the people. So that's what God is asking us now. What God asks us now is to spread the pure gospel. So when people are to learn gospel and true message from the Bible and God, we cannot tell them mixed with worldly stuff. No. We have to directly tell them what Bible is talking about. This picture was about, probably, as I remember, it was about second uh, international seminar that we had last time. And this is the picture with the entire church members. And then when we brought our foreign friends, Seoul tour, uh, they wanted to travel Seoul, and we brought them. And there was a pastor's wife from Thailand. Her name was uh, Surana. And then this is her testimony here. I've served God for 26 years. Trying to bring God's word to save those people who are almost drowned. 그막 죽어가는 그 영혼들에게 하나님의 말씀을 전해줘서 구원하려고 했습니다. 그분께서 I thank God that I can come here and I really learned how it is to save the people who is drowning because it's just like I have a complete Things now. God killed this is a place that is very practical in practicing God's way of doing things and God's work.
이곳에서는 정말 실제적인 일, 하나님의 일을 어떻게 하는 것이 실제적인 것을 보여주는 곳이라고 생각합니다. 각군이 Have you understood uh, the Thai language? Well, <laughs> she went back to Thailand, of course. You know, a lot of people forget what they learned from here. But this lady actually worked, tried to work on what she learned from here. And she built a san small sanitarium. And now she is nursing those people who are in need and pray and serve God. And now what happened? People gathered. People are being cured. Those poor people, those people who are in need, who are sick, the miracle happens. She will come visit one more time here next week. So that's why I'm really interested in this mission now. So last time, two of the Indonesians came here and learned, and they went back to their own homeland, and they work on what they learned. And people came to them, and the gospel is being spread. The gospel is very simple, very simple and easy. You don't have to learn Greeks or Hebrews to study Bible. No. You just feel the needs of those people and spread gospel. That's that easy. Remember one specific experience of Apostle Paul and Silas when they were captured in the Philippines because they were spreading the gospel of Jesus, which led to the cause of trouble, and they were imprisoned. They met one prison guard. The success of the gospel message does not depend upon learned speeches, eloquent testimonies, or deep arguments. It, it depends upon the simplicity of the message and its adaptation to the souls that are hungering for the bread of life. What shall I do to be saved? This is the want of the soul. What shall I do to be saved? This is this simple. When people, our foreign friends, came to visit our Serenam, and they found this simplicity in the gospel, and now even psychiatry, psychiatry brought her own patient to Serenam Nusa Center. And that doctor, that doctor actually finally agreed on her own patient that it is not the problem of physique. It was a problem of spirituality. The doctor even agreed upon this war is actually a spiritual war, not in the fight between a human and a sickness but only spiritual fight. Why Jesus came down onto the earth and died for us? Jesus knew and he knows every sickness that we have. There is but one gospel to save man. It will continue as long as there are men to be saved. There will never be another gospel. Amen. It says, there is no gospel other than Jesus. This is the everlasting gospel that we have to spread to our friends and family, relatives, and around the world. Even the time of Sodom and Gomorrah, even the time in Noah, even today, the gospel is the same. The way that people spread gospel is maybe different, but the core, the essential truth of that gospel is only one, that is Jesus Christ. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. On the cross of Jesus Christ, our salvation was made true. 
So now all we have to do is to tell people that you are being saved once you believe in Jesus Christ. It's that simple and easy. And when people believe that true and simple and easy truth, then that's the time that their body will be healed. Their sickness will be gone. But this word knowledge, knowledge around the world, this medical knowledge is everything that they are teaching right now is actually making this simple thing, simple solution, very complicated. Now, a lot of teenagers are suffering from mental diseases, addictions. When you are on your 40s and uh, 50s, you may have uh, physical sicknesses. It's kind of a natural thing, maybe. But when you are a teenager, most of the teenagers are suffering from mental diseases and addictions now. So among teenagers right now, from very ancient moment, very ancient eras, like Joseon Dynasty, you know, back in a few thousand years or a few hundred years, mental diseases has been always the problem for young people especially. So whoever, whoever has the brain can be addicted. So a scientist actually took a gorilla from the zoo and uh, did an experiment on that gorilla. Scientists show them a video clip, very fun video clips all day long. And this chimpanzee, this, this gorilla didn't want to do anything but only to watch that video clips all day long. Satan tempts them to seek it in lusts and pleasures that lead to ruin and death. He is offering them uh, the apples of Sodom that will turn to ashes upon their lips. They are spending their money for that which is not bread and their labor for that which satisfies not. So maybe many parents right now, they are suggesting their young kids to watch videos just for them to keep calm. This world has changed like that now, but this is not a cure. The true cure for their diseases, even mental diseases or physical diseases, are only one, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Spiritual problems, if you may have that, then the only cure for you is to believe Jesus Christ, the th three angels' message. So you may uh, recognize his face. He has been here uh, almost around one year. And before he left this Seronam, he testifies about having a time with his friends. Before coming to uh, this new start, new start center, he didn't know. But when he went back, when he learned from here and went back to his own place, and this is how he felt. So,
그래서 성경에 보면 뼈는 근심 문제다. 딱 얘기를 해주니까 얘가 근심? 하고 머리가 이게 뺑뺑 돌아가는 게 보이더라고요. 그래서 네가 스트레스 때문에 지금 병이 온 거다. 이런 식으로 얘기해주고 이 쉼터에 있는 여러 케이스들 많은 환자들이 이런 성향을 너처럼 비슷한 성향을 가지고 있다. 이 완벽주의 성향이 그 너를 찌르고 있다. 그래서 나를 빨리빨리 항상 긴장하고 있고 그런 식으로 살아가니까 너가 병이 든다. 이런 식으로 얘기를 했더니 자기가 인정하더라고요. 자기가 딱 완벽주의 그런 성향이라고 영적인 문제라는 그런 것도 얘기해주고 나니까 결국 하나님 불러야 된다. 얘기하니까 이제 알아듣더라고요. 그러다가 이제 이제 또 저에 대한 얘기를 했어요. 그 어떤 행복에 대한 비밀 하버드에 대해서 연구했는데 사실 관계 문제였다. 그래서 내가 하나님과 관계 가지니까 정말 항상 평안하고 항상 어떤 기쁨이 있다. 그래서 스트레스 받을 그런 상황이 생겨도 스트레스로 다가오지 않는다. 이런 얘기하니까 자기도 이제 기도를 많이 해봐야겠다. 이제 이제 하나님 도움 빌려야 된다는 걸 이제 많이 인정하고 기도를 많이 해보고 진짜 그렇게 해봐야겠다고 얘기하더라고요. 근데 이제 진짜 기도하는 것뿐 아니고 진짜 실제적으로 너가 스트레스 받는 그런 사건이 생길 때 그때 너가 못 참을 때 하나님 부르면 그때 분명히 만날 수 있다. He has become uh, more handsome, right? I saw him from the first uh, when he came here, and it was, he was not that handsome, but now he has become. handsome now and now as we uh, heard his testimonies his speeches were very calm and uh, very happy now right he is and he's now spreading gospel toward other people his friends you know he's now he started talking about jesus and All the diseases are because of the mental illness, mental problem, right? So I think he's preparing for uh, to become a pastor now. Uh, he uh, tries to study theology. Uh, there are a lot of uh, different names of diseases around us, but it's very simple for them to be cured. It's a gospel. Matthew chapter 4, verse 24. Then his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought to him all sick people who were afflicted with various diseases and torments, and those who were demon possessed, epileptics, and paralytics, and he healed them. Jesus did the same thing. Actually, we are following the Jesus' footstep. What if Jesus were here today? Then would he do the same thing? Of course, he would. I don't know what those patients are expecting to get from here, but all we have to do is introduce Jesus to them. So uh, throughout this Chuseok holidays, I went to my parents tomb my brother and sister they their families they try to join with me uh, to go to our my parents uh, tomb a cemetery and actually uh, my sister and my brother they're not a believer they don't believe uh, in jesus now they're more like buddhists but uh, I don't know, for this time, they wanted to come with me. And we went to uh, my parents' cemetery. And then uh, we were sitting around uh, at the bench, you can, as you can see in this picture. And we tried to have a worship service. And my sister, and sister's husband and my brother, they started to feel a little uncomfortable, right? And uh, But I told them, I asked them to join with us, the worship service. And my elder, elder son and his family uh, were giving the special music before them. And my second son, who is a pastor right now, 
he actually went to he he actually gave the special music to and then uh last week i gave the trans i gave the story about the butterfly's transformation and now when this little worm little caterpillar becomes a, a butterfly as you know that as you heard last week or the other time that this caterpillar actually becomes okay becomes solid and inside inside that uh, little house this butterfly is become the butterfly becomes liquid totally nothing and then when this liquid comes out as a butterfly which means totally different being this caterpillar is becoming a butterfly and becoming a totally different being so now when jesus tries to transform our character inside us what he does is the same just like a butterfly being born again from a little caterpillar we have to have experience in this world right now experience of jesus christ and being reborn from our mind our soul then when we, even if we die he will wake us up and bring us to heaven that's what i told my sister and my sister's husband my brother-in-law and my brother too and their children too i told him about heaven and reborn by the power of jesus christ and i actually ask those little kids about for how to forgive you know your own siblings and then uh i ask uh, the little kid who had older brother actually my grandniece i guess and then uh they all said that one by one all the kids actually had a time to confess themselves and they said all the kids said i want to go to heaven they want to go to heaven and my sister my brother and my brother-in-law they were watching those little kids their own kids their own grandkids confessing their own sins and try to forgive and they said this is a true christianity so they said they saw the true christianity so that's why dinner is on them so they bought the dinner they have never experienced before in their life a true christianity true love of jesus so i pray for them please lord open their hearts and make them change so that when my mom will raise up from the grave they will also hold hands together and go to heaven tell them how you found jesus and how blessed you have been since you gained on the experience in his service tell them what blessing comes to you as you sit and at the feet of jesus and learn precious lessons from his word tell them of the gladness and joy that there is in Christ christian life your warm fervent words will convince them that you have found the pearl of the great price 
Let your cheerful, encouraging words show that you have certainly found a higher way. This is genuine missionary work, and as it is done, many will awake as from a dream. So this is what we have to do. I actually told my wife before this Chuseok came, I told her that let's do something about our relatives and brother, brothers and sisters. Let's tell them the gospel and Jesus whom we experienced until now. Next week, we will have many different guests from around the world. So what should we tell them about Jesus? We actually had a survey. We got the survey from them, what they want throughout the entire seminar next week. And those foreign friends said that they wanted to see, they want to see actual Christian life from this Serona. They want to see us hold together and love each other and say good things to each other. May God bless each and every one of us to leave the gospel in our life. Thank you. Our Father in heaven, you have given us the gospel. You have made us known to the gospel too. So we thank you so much for giving us the gospel and made us a way to spread the gospel to other people too. Lord, this time, we want to spread the gospel to our foreign friends next week. Lord, first, we thank you so much for giving us this opportunity to hold one more international seminar to spread gospel to our foreign friends, Lord. Lord, please guide and open each and every one of the hearts of our foreign friends so that they will write the gospel onto their hearts. And when they go back to their own homelands, they would try to follow what they learn from here from the Bible and spread gospel to their friends and families and relatives and people who do not know Jesus yet. Lord, may your grace be upon us to be united, even if we, came, we come from many different nations, Lord. Lord, we are now still currently under the influence of this COVID-19 pandemic. Lord, Please help us so that you will be glorified through our services and by spreading gospel onto the people who don't know Jesus yet. Lord, Lord, please be with us to be healthy and to spread gospel, Lord. Even nowadays, Lord, there are people who try to give their belongings and give offerings and donations for our newly bought annex. Please guide them and bless their life. Lord, may you guide us to believe you more and call upon your name. I pray all this in the name of Jesus. Amen.